Hey everyone, welcome in to a, another daily editorial here on the KE Report. I'm getting an update from Graphene Manufacturing Group, also known as GMG, traded on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol GMG. I am chatting again with the CEO, Craig Nickel. Now, GMG, I think everyone is pretty up to speed on our show. However, I'll go over the three main product divisions, one being the battery division. We're going to spend most of this interview talking about the batteries, also the thermal XR and the graphene lubricants. Now, Craig, let's start off with the battery division and the pouch cells. The news came out middle of June, June 15th that outlined that the first pouch cell batteries were manufactured. I've gotten a lot of emails, a lot of questions on this development. Take us through what the significance is of now manufacturing the first pouch cell battery, please. Hey, thanks, Corey. Great to be back on. The pouch cells are really quite a versatile battery type or format. They would be able to be used in vehicles, phones, laptops, grid aviation, pretty much anything you care to name. They're very uh, malleable in terms of how you want to shape them and and they they basically get to the customer exactly what they want. But that also means, you know, that they're quite difficult to know how to step forward with this. So what we've decided to do is pu- push out a, a first uh, pouch cell. It's about six by eight centimetres. It's a pretty standard pouch. We're still making these, obviously, in, in a manual laboratory. And, you know, that's that's a big point that, that we're, we're really optimizing all of the different parts of the graphene and aluminium and, and how they relate uh, in, in the pouch cell. But what's interesting is the pouch cell can be used in so many different applications, as I said. So it's really trying to work out what's our first product in that pouch cell application space. And, and, and the list is, is really quite almost endless. Uh, right now, we, we're thinking really high power density kind of grid storage is a potential space for us to look at. But I think we'll 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 determine that as we progress further. You know, obviously, uh, we are working with Rio Tinto as as we've discussed and agreed on you know publicly that, that around the use of our batteries, our aluminium batteries, with them, and we're obviously talking to them and and many other big companies in this space about the use of pouch cells, and they're they're obviously very excited to get them and. We're obviously about, you know, but first of all, we really need to optimize it to what's the what's the application and then and then go and make some for other people to go and test them. So, Craig, what does that process look like? How do you now move from the first pouch cell battery into the actual product? What other steps are needed? Yeah, so what what it generally means is what's the energy density and the power density that the customer is after? And then once we've worked that out, we then define that in kind of an agreed user specification for the customer. And then we go and look to make that for them and test it. And it can be one or two cells. That's generally all they'll need. And then there's normally quite an in-depth review of that, considering this is brand new technology. But, you know, in in total, um, it, it is a process of optimizing and and understanding what is the first product we, we want to make, not necessarily try to do them all. In fact, we, we won't be able to. There's just too many requests. So it's really on trying to get to the bottom of what is the best product for us to make first for the first best customer for us, which is obviously a number of conversations. So, so that's where the time is really, not necessarily necessarily making the battery. So are we going to get some testing data out of these first pouch cells that were produced, or is it still too early for that? Uh, look, we could, but I think we'd probably, if we do anything first in this space, we'd probably release more testing data on coin cells because that's been going on for some time. We're optimizing it for customer requirements. So that would be the first thing we'd be coming out to. And then after we've selected potentially a few different applications or one application, a couple of customers, we might get those tested and validated and, and then come out with that. But really, the, the coin cells is, is well ahead of where the, where the pouch cells are. Um, it's, it's completely relatable. Um, in a coin cell, you've got about 1.7 square centimetres of, of cathode. And then in a pouch cell, you've got a pretty much unlimited amount, you, whatever you want to fold into it. But that, that's the same technology we put across that whole amount of cathode or the whole amount of um, material. It's just you put it over a wider area. So 
the, the coin cells tell us everything that we need to know on how the pouch cells will work, except the fact that it's not a pouch. So that's the last thing we need to check through. So, you know, I think if anything will come out with, a, you know, this is where our coin cells are at. This is the market we want to focus on, um, which is a whole lot more developed than, than pouch cells for now. But that'll frame our ability to go and, and get into a pouch cell market as well, of course. So should we not be expecting too much more news out of this pouch cell division, let's call it, just because it is so much earlier stage than the coin cells? I think that's fine for now. I think, you know, there, there are lots of companies are reaching out saying, how can we work with you? We want to understand how to use your tech and what does it mean? And we, we could have a potential where we could come out and say, hey, th- we're working with this customer at high level. Um, it's a bit like how we've done already with um, with Rio Tinto on, on saying how they could use an aluminium ion battery. So that that is definitely there. But I think right now the product development cycle of the coin cell will mean that will definitely come out first. And then as we show how good it can do and what we think, you know, where it could be used, um, it, it all can be then validated further with the pouch cell work, which will follow that. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about the coin cells then. We haven't had too many updates on this aspect, this division of the company. What can you tell us about how the coin cells are moving forward? Yeah, so it, we, we've been in a number of conversations with a number of companies around how they can move these for us to sell this into the market, distribute them. And so we're definitely in more advanced conversations in that space around what what would a battery of coin cell of this nature of thousands of cycles of really fast charging and and what that look like in terms of price and and volume and we're obviously progressing our design around what the battery plant would look like and we'd we'd bring all that together and we really still aim to start to get into some kind of production next year in terms of automated production uh so that's still our target and we still believe we can do that so that's that's kind of where that business is at. It's generally very focused on getting to the right product specification that has been requested. You know, there's a, there's a lot of work to do there, but we've definitely progressed to a point where we can kind of see how our way through it, which is really exciting. Now we need to just keep doing the work and getting there to the, to the point where we can say this is the product that, that people will buy and then, then move from there. So it's all about understanding exactly what, specific energy a customer wants in those batteries and then what's the charge cycle that they want and then what's the performance and what's and how all that will look um, commercially and you know there's there's a lot of excitement because of the health benefits of our battery where you know, lithium batteries are you know, coin cells are really quite harmful or lethal especially to kids if when they swallow them so you know we won't have that issue so it's there's a lot of benefits there, but right now, you know, people are very keen to see it come through, but we still need to make sure that the tech works as what, what the customer wants and then progress it in that way. So what has been some of the feedback? What can you share with us? Because these coin cells have been out there and it sounds like you still don't necessarily have a solid product in terms of what you're going to end up producing, but you are getting closer to it. So what has the feedback been? Yeah, so we've we said in our last quarterly update that you know we've got very high capacity per square centimeter as it relates to where uh, lithium ion batteries sit already. Um, so we've definitely said that in the last quarterly update, which is extremely promising for our technology. We're also very focused on making sure that the graphene is the right graphene every time we want it to be the right graphene, and that's all about making battery grade graphene. So. We want to make sure that's all lined up so that when we pull the trigger, every batch that we want to make into a battery will work. And we're very close there. And that's there's, there's no other company that's doing that. And we know that once we get there, which is definitely trending in the right way, that that quality of graphene and the ability to make that low cost every time is going to be a massive achievement. So we're very close to being able to say that. We can't say that yet. So those are the two main things. And then, you know, building the team out. It's it's something to to say that you want to be a battery company, but we have to be a battery company. And, you know, it was only a year ago we were just a graphing company and we've put in place a team and making batteries now um, every day and, and learnt an enormous amount. And now we're, we're putting in place at how to progress to the next step. And that obviously, you know, looks at it, see how do we bring in Bosch to make the factory for us and then, 
Um, how do we make sure that we have all the graphene we need at, at the right quality, at the right cost, and and then making sure that the product meets the customer's needs. So that's kind of what, where it all sits in that matrix of finalising things. Uh, we're definitely moving in the right direction. I feel very happy and very excited about it. Uh, we get data pretty much every day on our battery. It's very exciting. Obviously, we're very keen to share that data, but we do need to make sure that the data is always repeatable and it's backed up by third party before we issue it so that it's final. And so that's that's something else we'll, we'll look to come to do and say, this is the third party data. This is where it's at. This is where graphene's at. This is, this is um, how it can produce graphene at the right cost or the right quality. That's the other bit we need to come out and say. And so then what is the final product? And that's the bit that we also need to do as well. So there's a there's a bit there to, to kind of work through where we've got people, we've got the got the got the money, and we've got the capital, and you know, I, I think we've got the 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 IP to make it happen. We just gotta do it. And that's what we're doing every day. So Craig, this potential news of the graphene production or acquisition of what you need and the quality that you need. This sounds like it could be a big development. I remember a lot of questions being asked about that in one of our recent webinars. So is this a news release that people really should be focused on? Look, when that, when that comes out, that's a material announcement. And we won't make that announcement until we absolutely guarantee to ourselves that we can do that every time. Every time we want to make battery grade graphene, it comes out that way and we can use it straight in the battery. And when that happens, we will make that announcement, and that will be a significant announcement in the battery world. That's absolutely for sure. You know, it's one thing to say that you can make graphene into a battery, but it's another thing to say you can make it 100% of the time usable. And that's where we need to be so that our value chain is very smooth and clean and, and efficient and effective. So that's what, you know, we've all, always said is that we, you know, we're very focused on making sure that happens and it's not there yet. And when it does, that production of graphene from battery grade graphene from natural gas, you know, will be a potential unicorn in my mind just by itself. It can be used in every lithium ion battery there is as well, but not that that would be a focus of us. But, you know, I think people would start testing it and start realizing it, how they could use that. And, you know, that would be another opportunity. Right now, we're focused on just making it for our battery and then uh, making sure it's, it's the right stuff every time. Okay, Craig, thank you for that update. I do appreciate that. Now, final question. Let's recap some of the management and board of directors changes that have happened at the company. You made the comment that if you're going to be more of a battery company. You need to have more of that management team. So please give us just a quick overview of some of these changes. Yeah, so we need to continue to evolve as the company evolves into basically being a, a large scale battery manufacturer. So we've had the addition of uh, Emma Fitzgerald, who is um, is, a, is a very well-renowned global executive uh, in the energy sector, previously the global CEO of uh, Puma Energy, uh, the, the the commercial arm of Trifuga Trading, which is one of the largest trading companies in the world. Uh, she's joined our board as an executive, uh, so not executive director. She was a previous boss of mine, actually. So I do like to bring um, people I've worked with previously because I there's a, there's a definitely a speed of trust there element. And then what we've also had is a, is a, it's a formation of a, of a technical advice committee, which is including for the first time, um, you know, we got uh, two people who've come on board for that. And that's uh, Bob Galen. He, he was previously the, the chief technology officer, the second employee of, of Cattle, um, the largest battery company in the world. Now that's about 100,000 people. He left about a bit over a year ago. He's on a number of different committees and he's seen our technology and he really thought that he'd love to be on board. I'm very happy to have him as an advisor. And then also Professor Dan Brett, who's sitting in charge of the largest um, electrochemical battery team in Europe as the leader of uh, UCL, um, University College London electrochemical team. And so he's seen our technology as well. And we'd love to be able to provide advice and we, we definitely looking forward to working with both of those gentlemen. And I, you know, I think that's the part of the, the team that we need to keep bringing on as, as, and we will continue bringing on to build our business into what will be, you know, a, absolutely a global scale battery making uh, business um, at, at, at some point. And that's the first few steps of turning ourselves there. 
um, but with a kind of keen eye to the energy savings part of the business as well. That's right. There are the other divisions, right? The Thermal XR and the Lubricants. We're going to wrap it up here, though, Craig, because, look, I just wanted to get that update mostly on that battery division. If anybody has any follow-up questions, please email me, fleck at kereport.com. In full disclosure, I am a shareholder of GMG. I'll follow up with Craig as some more news hits the market and to get more of your questions answered. Craig, thank you again for your time. Thanks, Corey. Talk soon again.